Sesman is the champion, he is 16-bit. Sesman is the champion, he is 16-bit. Okay, here's my review of the Donkey Kong Country series, which includes Donkey Kong Country 1, Donkey Kong Country 2, and, must I say it, Donkey Kong Country 3. Okay, pretty much no one is denying that this is an awesome series got right here. But there haven't been many in-depth reviews about each game. Which is the best game? Which is the worst? What makes them better or worse? Well, you're going to sit back and find out. First, we have Donkey Kong Country, the original game that started this incredible series. It featured the characters Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, who are now classic icons of video game history. Now let's get down to gaming. This is a classic example of the golden era of video games. Games that are unmatched by nowadays standards. By now, a save feature was pretty standard, so you would expect it in a quality game like Donkey Kong Country. Most people played one player, as the two-player mode was mostly alternating. And now we begin our adventure on the colossal ape island. At least that's what I call it. I hope I'm not lame. Like in Super Mario World, you get a high quality map screen to begin the game. Right when you roll into this world of excellence, you know what kind of game you're getting into. From the quality animation, the excellent backgrounds, the solid music, everything about it is just excellent. Even the controls are very responsive and fun to use. And wait, what if you get hit? Oh, then Diddy runs in and you can play as him instead. Playing as two different characters adds some depth to the game. Diddy is very fast with a cartwheel that is the bane of your foes. DK is strong and has a long jump, but isn't as good at killing enemies, and it's much slower. The game features lots of variety, such as animals you can use to ride, and secret passages to find more bananas. DK, Diddy, what's up with you and your stupid fascination with bananas? I do not share your passion. The game starts well, because overworld levels are the best in the game. Then there's cave levels. Mine levels. Then there's the temple levels, with backgrounds so realistic that when I went to Mexico, I was surprised I wasn't seeing Kremlins running out of the corners. And like all platform games, some water levels. I'm just gonna say that the water levels in this game are not as strong as the overworld levels. The controls start getting awkward, and with DK especially, you'll run into a lot of fish and die. The only truly flawed levels are the snow levels, where you're forced to fly through barrels or else you'll fall to your death at the bottom of the screen. I'd call these the hardest moments in the entire series because of their pure frustration. I don't know if it's just me, but after a while I get frustrated not being on my own two feet in a video game and running along if it's a platformer. Once I'm underwater too long or I'm flying through deadly barrels, it gets a little frustrating. I wish there was more just on land standard levels. The flaws are still very minor, and this is still an awesome game. You pretty much have to love it. I don't think there's anyone who says, I hate Donkey Kong Country! And if they do, they're like the kids who's bullied at the school. Yeah, the game is very good, but it does have some little flaws, and I'm going to go over these. You would think in a game called Donkey Kong Country, DK would be the strongest character, but Diddy is actually much superior. Don't get me wrong, I like DK, and he's a powerful jumper and a strong character, but still, he lumbers compared to Diddy. Diddy is just faster, his cartwheel is way better, and playing as him is just a more solid control experience. I found myself playing as Diddy much more than DK because of his speed. I know I'm being kind of whiny here. This is an awesome game. And you might think, oh, you're nitpicking. Well, I am nitpicking. And now we're going to move on to the bosses. Yes, the bosses. Don't deny, don't deny, don't deny. They're not that great. The bosses are underwhelming. Jump on them a few times and they die. Throw a couple barrels, they die. None of them are really very challenging experience or inventive. I mean, th they look nice. They're nice graphics, but... Not a very inventive bosses, even the final boss, I'm sorry. So that was the first Donkey Kong Country, and yes, a very good game. So, could a grand game like that sequel be any better? Well, let's see, right here. Donkey Kong Country 2. Wait a minute, where's DK on the title? Well, wait a minute, this is Donkey Kong's game. I mean, he's got to be here somewhere. Where, where is he? Where, wait, wait, is he, is he behind Diddy? No, no, Donkey Kong's not behind Diddy. No, wait, wait, who's that? No, he's not here. There's no Donkey Kong! That is a major blow. No Donkey Kong in a Donkey Kong Country game. I mean, look at him in the center. He's like, awesome. But, when you think about it, gameplay-wise, maybe the game could be improved without Donkey Kong. I mean, he was lumbering and just not as fun to use. Luckily, Dixie is an awesome character. Dixie perfectly balances out the game. She's not as fast as Diddy, but she controls well and has a new move. She can spin her ponytail to make her spin through the air like a helicopter slightly. This is a very useful move, and you'll find many secrets like this. You'll travel across the screen like this. She's just an excellent balance to the game. 
I'm gonna say right now, this is definitely a worthy sequel, and I just love this game. There are many little things added that make the game better, such as animals now have a super move when you press A that, like, say, unleashes a charge or a super jump. The secrets have been improved too. This is one of the first games that lets you play mini games on the side to earn special prizes. There is just a vast amount of secrets in this game. There's even a secret world if you get enough coins and you can enter it. This adds a lot of replay value to it. Now watch the use of moves. First the ponytail to fall. And now watch this. When you press A, you can throw one of the other members onto an enemy and hit them, or reach higher places. The moves are just vastly improved in this game. I guess this move isn't unbelievable, but it just adds another slight amount of fun and a feeling of variation. The enemies are once again top notch. Maybe not the most difficult to defeat, but still very good. The bosses are very much an upgrade, but are still quite simple to defeat. Like I said, most of the good things in this game that make it stand out are small things, like upgrades, say like the animal companions. Squitter is a spider in this new version who can shoot webs and make temporary platforms out of webs. There's a similar set of animals in this one as the old one, but some got booted. I didn't really care that they got rid of the ostrich, but Winky's gone! The frog Winky! Yeah, no one cared. Now back to reality. So what is actually bad about this game? There's nothing terrible in this game, and that's obvious when you have the Donkey Kong Country series. But still there are flaws. The water levels aren't perfect. You have irritating minor problems. No Donkey Kong, but wait, what's that? DK was on the cover all along, but you know what I'm talking about. He wasn't a playable character. So now we're done with this one, and we have Donkey Kong Country 3. I don't have as much to say about the last one, but I'm still going to sum it up before I have an overview. Right off the bat, we see there's no Donkey Kong and no Diddy Kong, which is, yes, a serious problem, as those were the founding characters and the basis of Donkey Kong as a series. Can a game still be excellent without them in the same series? Yes, but it is very irritating. Dixie was a great character when matched with the speed of Diddy, but now we have a sluggish little baby Kong named Kitty Kong. He's lame! Whether you're annoyed or not by how he looks, his play control is a little irritating. Luckily, Dixie's still in the game, but there's not that balance between the characters like in the second. I have to say, the levels in this game are fairly typical, but still very entertaining and well-built just like the others. The game's on par in quality with the others, but just not too creative. There are some minor differences to make it an excellent game, though. For one, now you can explore a different map by unlocking different areas, and it's much less linear. Now you can upgrade your boat to get to different areas of the map, and there's actually some little secrets to be found. This is a really interesting part of the game. Basically, once you get past having to play as Kitty Kong, this game is excellent. While weaker than the other two in some ways, this game is still awesome and has its own strengths. For instance, graphically, this is my favorite game on the Super Nintendo. Everything is just so sharp and excellent, and the mountains can sometimes be breathtaking. Most of the animals in this game aren't very creative, except the elephant, who is pretty much awesome. Though it looks stupid and I prefer Squitter, this one is more versatile. Its trunk can even squirt water or suck barrels towards you. Like I said, this game is excellent, but I don't have much to say about it. It's kind of standard, other than its graphics and a few improvements. It had flaws in some areas, like the terrible sewer levels that sometimes switch your controls backwards. That was a terrible idea and just a gimmick to make you lose. But still, awesome game. Now we'll have a recap and see which one is the best one and wins award for the best Donkey Kong Country game. First, Donkey Kong Country. Excellent game that started an awesome series, had some minor flaws sprinkled through the game. These include water levels, snow levels, and difficulty of finding save points. Also, Donkey Kong was a little weak. A 9 out of 10 for phenomenal. Donkey Kong Country 2, an excellent twist to the series with a new character that was very useful to the game. Small additions make this excellent and superior to the original, but not quite a whole grade higher. Also a 9 of 10, nearly a 10. Finally, Donkey Kong Country 3, an excellent game that keeps up with the tradition of excellence. Though it has great level design and graphics, it doesn't quite match the creativity and greatness of the other two. The resulting score, one number lower. An 8 out of 10, still excellent. And so that leaves someone that you know who won. The award for best of the series goes to Donkey Kong Country 2. Though the second is best, both of the others are excellent too. Any game from this series is worth your time. Every last one of them is awesome. 
While not quite the brilliance of Super Mario World or some of the RPGs, this is still one of the top Super Nintendo games I've ever played. So give me your opinion on which one you think is the best of the series. Also give me any review suggestions. This is SNESMAN, thank you for watching.